Yes. Yes. This uh, there's a wonderful woman uh, named Linda Heather, and she was she's been working in art as healing since she her, she became a cancer survivor. This is a woman that was with Delancey Street in the city, where they were helping you know convicts and junkies and all that kind of people with a much better outcome than a kind of cinema house where things got kind of creepy. So she was uh, now she had been working with first with adults then with younger people, and then managed to come up with this idea of artist healing for incarcerated youth. And the, uh, the recidivity rate just shot, because you're actually learning how to do something that more of the school should be doing, real, real art, etc. So the, this a team of about eight kids would be working on something like this. They should work with masks with them as well. That's the whole set of identifying. And these are ballet kids for the most part. That frequent Hispanics that haven't even seen the water. So she's got this one, and she's got another whole spread of them of the uh, of waterways. If, if you can see the whole Passion of Place, where they look at the watershed of the Carmel system, she's brought them to see because you can't really take them out. They weren't right. Bristol, bristles on their ankles, so they really are locked down. And you turn eighteen, you're off to Juvie Hall and Hall and cut a deal. That's what happens to these guys. So she, um, the, her ability to keep kids out of jail, that, that go through this stuff, have their lives more fulfilling when they're there. And the, the money saying is just, it's, it's sort of like a, I don't know, it's a residence hall, but they decorated the walls of the backyard. There's, it's just a beautiful place. And now, because of COVID and all, that project has come to a point. You get a new director, they've got another vision for things. So the, that it's it's un, it's suspended for now, and she's got to worry about how to get it out. I'm pitching that she goes back into doing doing artist healing with cancer survivors and older people, and maybe turns it back over to the arts council to pick up a three hundred dollar a month bill for all these beautiful things they kept, and tracking down all these wonderful kids would take private <laughs> a company or something to do. So they uh, again, if we we, we want to get them out. This is a wonderful thing to get them on. Where the there'll be another one over at uh, the uh, Holden Meyer Center over in Seaside. will have one. I'm working on getting the Elton the Monterey Elks to take one in that cute little Frank Sinatra Rat Pack corner, and then the American Legion in Monterey has, has suggested I might be interested as well. And then our uh, my publisher at Foolish Tones would think it'd be a really beautiful thing to have something this in his office. Well, we've had the Oakhorn Slough. Yeah. And uh, we have an accent wall, like in my suite, where it's red. And the red's really uh, played off that against the wall, and it, it just fit perfectly. It was definitely made for that. And when you look at something this large, this is hard. I can't do it. And I, I'm really impressed that, you know, you have a bunch of kids doing this, and these kids aren't from the peninsula. These are kids, as Michael was talking about are very talented and I don't want to say it's unfortunate because we all can trade stories in our youth that we didn't get caught doing. Mm. <laughs> and uh, so um, it's miraculous and an interesting thing how we look at art in this community and we need to understand too there's an incredible undertow off this peninsula of fabulous artists that should get the recognition that Michael is bringing forth here on the peninsula today. So we are Trying to some the open the uh, you know there's open mics and there's music there's lots of good things but the first Friday art walk PG has a lovely one the uh, Stan Salinas as well you know the other side of the mm -hmm. Lewis Group we're working with the, the Carl Cherry from uh, Center for the Arts at Foundation so don't ask them for money they, they should be given to them and they they'll give us a garden party because they're booked up with exhibits for over a year oh. but they'll let us let the, the the readers, the public, the, the homeless and marginalized readers that, is, that publish their books could be in there to do some readings. We'll be down in Greenfield for this, the Harvest Festival, and then it's famous for two for two days, and then we'll have a we'll have stages there, and we'll also have a stage for the, the Day of the Dead in Monterey. And we've been getting beautiful support from First Sight Monterey, and the, yeah, so the, the stuff gets into the convention center. So we, it's, it's a great story that. In an age where angst is horrific for teens, more than ever, 
and suicide rates are crazy far up. That you know, there's, there are really good programs out there where you learn a lifelong skill, and it, you don't have to be like he and end up. He's, now he's doing model railroad trains. <laughs> From your first gig to your next to your last. <laughs> great circle of life, as we said. So I think we've, we've hit one o'clock. If anybody wants to talk to us, fantastic. If anybody wants to get books at a great price, fantastic. The, the podcast with these two are on, first, are, are on, the, uh, on YouTube, and they're by the titles. You know, so it's this, this one is, uh, as we say, Once Upon a Time in Big Sur, read by what the, the, the Blue Town Rats organizer. Uh, refers to the by uh, William B. Yeats collected folk tales in Ireland, and with Lady Gregory, that's punk. They didn't know what they were doing. They went off and did it. That's us making a podcast. Oh, <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.